Hey, what's up, guys? So this time we're going to be talking about Coulomb's Law. We're going to talk about the formula and the variables associated with Coulomb's Law, what the electrostatic constant is, which is shown by lowercase k in the formula. We're going to see the similarities and differences that this law has to Fg in the formula for Fg. And then we're going to show some different graphing, different relationships with uh, Coulomb's Law. So first, let's just jump right into what the formula is and the different variables associated with it. Coulomb's Law is shown by Fe equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Okay, now what Fe is, is this gonna, is gonna be the electrostatic force, all right? And because it is a force, it has a unit of Newtons. And what this force is, is it's the push or pull that charges have on one another. But in, electro, in electrostatics, we don't call them pushes or pulls. We say there is a, either an attraction or a repel. So we have these things that either repel or attract. All right, And we know that opposites, they like to attract and then so the opposites are going to attract and like charges are going to repel each other. So those do that with some sort of force, which also follows Newton's third law. Whatever they push on you, so if these are going to be two like charges, they are going to repel and they will both repel at F. Okay, Newton's third law, if I push on you, you are going to push on me with the exact same force. Next is K, and this is going to be the electrostatic constant. All right, and I'll go more in depth to what that exactly is in just one second. Qs are going to represent charges, and remember that they have a unit of Coulomb after the great Charles Coulomb, or as we say in the physics community, Charlie! And then R squared, or just R, let's just get rid of that squared for now, R is going to be the distance between them, the charges. All right, and this is going to be in meters. All right, so this is what we're going to have. So if I look at an example of this with no math involved, I'm going to have a charge here. And we'll say that this is a positively charged and this one is negatively charged. All right. Now these two are going to attract each other with some sort of Fe. All right. But they also have some distance between them R. And they also have, this one has some sort of Q, we'll call that Q1 and this is Q2. So the only thing missing here in from this formula, if I write the formula again, Fe equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared, don't forget the squared. All right, the only thing that's gonna be different missing now is this K. Now K has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newtons times meters squared divided by coulomb squared. And just remember guys, just because this is a long, annoying unit does not mean that you do not have to write it when you're showing work, okay? And this right here is going to be the electrostatic constant. So this value right here, depending on your reference table or what you're using, this value is gonna go in for this every single time. So going one step further, if let's say I gave these some sort of charge. I said this one's worth three coulombs and this one's equal to minus two coulombs. And this is uh, 0.01 meters apart. Okay, they're one centimeter apart. And I wanna know what is going to be the electrostatic force between those two items. So I would just say Fe is equal to K, Q1, Q2, over r squared, I can solve for this by saying 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton times meter squared per coulomb squared times three coulombs 
times two minus two coulombs divided by 0 0.01 meters squared. All right, and then you guys could do the algebra. You can find out what that is, but you'd get some answer in newtons. That is really what you are going to do with that. Now, if looking at this formula, it should ring a bell for you that way back in the day, we had a formula that looked like this. F, Fg equaled big capital G, M1, M2 over R squared. All right? This right here was where G, that was a constant, the gravitational constant. We had M1, this was, these were masses, and R was the distance between them, all right? And this force, this was the force due to gravity between two masses. So if I had two masses here, that was the force due to gravity on those two masses. Now this is very, very similar. Fe equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now there is one difference. And if you remember when we first started talking about this, the one dif dif difference is that this FG can only pull, right? Gravity doesn't push. Gravity only pulls. Where FG, I mean FE, can pull opposite charges, but it can also repel. And that's when we have same charges. And sometimes, in fact, this will happen at exactly the same time because protons have a mass, right? They are responsible for the mass of an atom. So if I have two things right here and this is a proton and here's another proton, we have to look and say, oh, wow. There are going to be a couple different forces going on. There is going to be the Fg because these two masses are going to pull one another. M1 and M2, according to this formula over here, they have to pull. But they are like charges. And because they are like charges, that means that they are also going to experience some Fe. So there's something to keep in mind, right? Fe is not a replacement for Fg. It works with Fg when there is a mass present. So when we consider the electron kind of massless, this Fg is very, very minimal, like as almost quote unquote as massless as it would be. So please remember that, but when we have heavy things like protons or neutrons, right? Well, no, no neutrons because there'll be no Fe in neutrons. But when you are set with two protons, there's going to be both of these acting at the same exact time. The last relationship I want to look at is when I set up graphs, okay? And the first relationship I want to look at, and we'll keep the formula up, let's look at two relationships. What is going to happen to Fe when R goes up? So if I make this slope in red so we can see a little better. When R goes up, these are indirectly related, so Fe has to go down. But remember, it's going to go down exponentially. So the relationship between Fe and R is going to look something like this. Where the further you get away, that is eventually going to go to a zero slope. All right, So that's very important, this indirect relationship. As R goes up, we have a really, really strong electrostatic force when we're really, really close, when R is very small. But as R goes up, Fe goes down. So as R goes up, Fe goes down exponentially. But if I look at, say, the relationship of Fe to Q, okay, these slopes in blue, as Q goes up, these are directly related to Fe in a linear sense. So these will be the two graphs you are going to see for Coulomb's law. They're going to ask you to relate these two and these. 
All right. And one last thing, just a little side note, because I have an extra minute, guys. There's going to be a lot of relationship questions, meaning they will say if I like, and we've seen these before, if I double the mass, what happens, what happens to F or if I double like mass one, right? Guys, remember, write the formulas and then plug everything in as one. Right, and then get some sort of baseline. So this would be one times one times one times one squared. That would be one. Now, if you want to know what happens when I double this, just do what I ask you to do. K will remain one. Mass one now becomes two. Q stays one, and the distance between them would stay one. So now we have a situation where it's one times two is two times one is one. So we have two over one. Now it has gone from one to two, so it has doubled. And you could do this with any of the relationships. If I half the distance, this would become a half. And that would end up quartering things. right? And you see those relationships back to that previous slide. If I double the mass as mass goes up, it's going to double linearly. okay? But if I were to say double the R, that would quarter it or make it really, really small. Because as you double this, it drops down exponentially. All right, guys, I hope that helps. As you can see, we looked at the formula. Fe equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Don't forget the squared. The electrostatic force is going to be given to you or it's going to be on some sort of reference table or cheat sheet that you're going to get. The similarities and differences, Fg pulls and pulls only. And electrostatic force can pull or push. And we graph the relationships. Remember, as R goes up, Fe is going to go down exponentially. And as Q goes up, Fe goes up linearly. Hope that helps, guys. I'll see you on the next one.